think those zombies were trying to bukake me. So I've been playing Lollipop Chainsaw. Well, this is different. So different, in fact, that I found myself wondering how much Suda actually had to do with it. Which is apparently a problem people seem to have with a lot of his games. What also caught my eye is that the music is done by Akira Yamaoka, who did the Silent Hill soundtracks. And Jimmy Uren from Mindless Self-Indulgence. This is especially strange because the game uses a shit ton of licensed music from a number of other bands and barely uses the music composed by its actual composers. And to top it all off, the game was written by movie director James Gunn. For some reason. I could probably dig up all sorts of shit about this game's seemingly nuts development cycle, but I honestly prefer it to stay a mystery. Anyway, Lollipop Chainsaw follows the tale of Juliet Starling, who is on her way to meet up with her boyfriend Nick. However, a zombie outbreak happens because of a dimensional rip, and her boyfriend gets bitten. To save him from his zombified fate, she decapitates him. She then puts a spell on him to keep his severed head alive, and goes on a mission to stop the zombie outbreak, with Nick hanging from her belt. Now, remember when I said in my Killer7 review that I liked its smart and adult approach to humor? Well, this game is humor of the dicks and boobs and butts variety. It is, however, well written within the bounds of dick tits humor, and I actually ended up enjoying it. So, not completely unlike Killer7, the game has a great attention to style down to every last detail. The style in question, however, is completely different. The game has this cell shady comic book thing going on, and while I do like it, it seems a bit unoriginal. The same can be said about the game's main concept as well. I feel like a cheerleader with a chainsaw is one of those things you think of when you try to be weird and original. For instance, allow me to propose Suda51's new game. You play as a big-breasted woman on a motorcycle in post-apocalyptic Tokyo. She fights Yakuza and uses a metal chain for melee attacks and a portable railgun for ranged attacks. And some levels will be completely done in black and white for no reason. And the soundtrack is scored by Adamant and Justice. It'll be called Make Fuck Not Kill. Maybe it's just because I'm equally as brilliant, but it all seems a little too easy to me. Anyway, the game's lower budget is also very noticeable. Especially the graphics aren't all that great. And while the semi cell shaded style makes up for a lot, the animations still kinda suck. As for the game's music, it's composed by Akira Yamaoka and Jimmy Yuren. Besides the loads of licensed music, the soundtrack fits the game perfectly. Because that whole high school cheerleader let's go to college vibe is exactly what the game is going for. The licensed music, however, is all over the place and covers everything from Dragon Force to Mastercraft. Even going so far as to include Pac-Man Fever. Gameplay wise, it's pretty generic hack and slash. It's not bad or anything, but compared to how incredibly original and well thought out Killer7 was, it was kind of a letdown to me. I feel like I could best describe it as a dumped down Devil May Cry. It has a lot of the same elements, they're just not expanded upon as much. Basically, you fight zombies with your chainsaw and you kill them by decapitating them. You can use pom-pom attacks by pressing the square button. These pom-pom attacks basically stagger your enemies, or as the game calls it, puts them in a groggy state. In this groggy state, the zombies can be decapitated in one hit. With triangle and square, you do high attacks and low attacks. And with the circle button, you can dodge enemy attacks. The game wants you to do combos by pressing these buttons in certain orders. Kinda like a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. It's a little basic, but I did have a lot of fun with it. Just don't go in expecting Platinum Games levels of gameplay. Anyway, when you kill shit, you earn gold medals. And similar to most games like it, you can spend these gold medals to buy new combos and items. The items you buy are basically stat boosts, so you can do things like raise your max health. And when you decapitate more than one zombie at a time or in rapid succession, you earn Platinum Medals. 
These can be spent on things like unlockable costumes and other bonuses like artwork. In addition to this, the game also ranks you based on your performance, and there are a few collectible items in there as well. As the game progresses, you'll also get some new weapons like the Chainsaw Blaster. These extra weapons don't add a whole lot, and it almost seems as if they had more things planned to do with them, but couldn't for some reason. I got that vibe from a lot of things in the game actually, and I don't mean that it's unfinished or buggy, but to me it just seemed like a lot of things didn't make it into the game as they had planned. For instance, a lot of concepts and ideas introduced only get used like one or two times, and all the bosses feel like they have tons of character, but only a little bit actually shows. And without getting into spoiler territory, I'll just say that the game feels like it was supposed to be longer. I mean, if you look at the way the story is set up, compared to how it actually unfolds, you'll probably see what I mean. Anyway, to regain health, you need to pick up lollipops you find scattered across the levels. Also, you can put Nick's head on a decapitated zombie's body to make him get rid of obstacles in your way. Doing this triggers a rhythm minigame, which the game is filled with. I mean, the game is completely ridden with quick time events and little minigames like this. And while I do think the game is creative enough with the way they're used, I'm still not a big fan. They often catch me off guard and only cause panic when I really feel they shouldn't. All they really do is just throw random button prompts at your head, instead of using the game's actual mechanics. And it made the game feel really disjointed to me because of it. Either way, I'd still say it's a good game. I mean, it certainly isn't perfect, but I did have a lot of fun with it. The game is never serious and it's basically one big joke from beginning to end. And it doesn't really try to be anything else either. I found myself laughing out loud a couple of times, and the game really doesn't give a shit about anything. It's really immature and stupid, but it takes pride in the fact that it is. And somehow, it also manages to parody itself and be self-aware. I kinda respect that, for some reason. Anyway, regardless of how much Suda actually was involved with the game, I still ended up liking it. And I do really want to play some of his other games, like No More Heroes and Killer is Dead, at some point. Just not right now. Because now, it's time for the outro.